319 in the afternoon. The uh, gas line is in limbo. The Daily News Miner published... Uh, Oh, Frank Murkowski just doesn't go away, does he? Just he's in rare form, man. And he, you know, the last time he poked his head up, he was down at uh, Conoco, whatever, down in the building, having some meeting all with him, and 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 they ran him out of town. Now he decides to uh, publish an editorial piece about Governor Palin's uh, gas line is in limbo. As a former governor who negotiated a draft contract with North Slope and Oil gas producers, it is hard not to compare where the gas line project is now to where it would have been had Governor Sarah Palin's administration simply proceeded to improve the draft contract we negotiated pursuant the Strand and Gas Development Act. Hey, Frank, let me let me just give you a little, uh, <laughs> let me click the light bulb on for you, guy. Here it is now. Your deal failed. You invited all the oil producers in the room. Y'all cut a deal, and the legislature tanked it. Here, here's what you forgot. Governor Palin put a deal through. It's law. <laughs> it's law now. Uh, Pat Galvin, Commissioner of Revenue, is on the phone with us. Uh, Commissioner, welcome to the program. Thanks, Eddie. Is, did I get anything wrong? Or <laughs> And I, well, hey, you don't need to comment on my comments, uh, <laughs> Commissioner. Uh, what, what, what's the uh, what's the office's impression of the governor, former governor's uh, editorial today? Well, I think it's uh, it's basically misinformed and uh, trying to do some revisionist history on on uh, what uh, they failed to accomplish during the strand of gas discussions. Um, he's basically reimagining a deal that. Um, was bad for the state and trying to paint it in a light that doesn't reflect its actual terms. Uh, in the in there, he tries to make this comparison between a uh, stranded gas contract that never actually, the, the way he describes it, never actually existed, and then tries to paint a G in a way that it doesn't actually exist either, and and make a comparison. So a G is um, law. Well, it's not only law, but uh, <laughs> it's a law that he can look up if he wanted to actually reflect it properly in his uh, his description, and he doesn't. Yeah, it's amazing that this individual would um, have the temerity to enter into an op-ed piece denouncing the governor's, uh, or at least the status of of the gas line, when in fact his, was, his, his whole plan imploded. I mean, right on the third floor. I believe that's the governor's on the third floor. Is that correct? I can't remember that. Um, yeah, yeah. I don't think it imploded on the third floor because he actually wanted it to go forward. That's right. Um, as bad as it was. And I think the actually the, the issue isn't so much that that it failed as it didn't do what he says it did. He claims that it it uh, exchanged uh, certainty on behalf of the state on on gas taxes in exchange for firm commitments from the producers to commit their gas to the project and accept the risk of the project and that's just patently false description of that contract there was no commitment on the part of the producers to do anything uh let alone commit their gas they didn't even have commitments really to move the project ahead uh at all do the work that trans canada is doing right now right in terms of the actual engineering and design work that's being done today that's being done by both trans canada and by uh, the folks over at the Denali project, and so what we have under the G is we have two guys doing stuff to advance this project. Where under the strain of gas, there was no guarantee of anything was going to happen. The next major step to come forward is the open season. Is that correct? Or, well, that's or can, one. Can, I mean, that's that's one of the sort of signposts in the road. It's important under a GIA because it's the the juncture where the the state's participation. Um, potentially changes uh, the project itself will continue to move forward under the terms of a GIA through that open season, and so it is just one signpost as the project moves forward. Right. But it's important to also note that um, the that it is the initial open season of the project. Um, there will be continual open seasons as the project both is developed and then once it's developed, as they solicit more gas to expand. At, um, at, at what point in time does Trans Canada and the Denali um, group come together and, and merge or something or whatever? When, when is there? When does that meeting happen? I mean, in your all's thought, 
There's not going to be two pipelines. We all agree with that, no matter what side of the aisle you're on. So that means Trans Canada and Denali must come together at some point. Is that correct? Well, I don't know. If, I mean, I think coming together is probably a, or, an, an overstatement. I think okay. ultimately one project will advance to fruition. Mm-hmm. And I think um, what you can see in the way that, that particularly Trans Canada is viewing this is, is they're in a competition. And they, Trans Canada is a pipeline company that competes around the world uh, with other folks who want to build pipelines in the same areas, and they win by coming in with projects that are lower cost and on schedule. All right, we're speaking, so, we're speaking with Pat Galvin, Commissioner of Revenue for the state of Alaska. Hey, uh, Commissioner, let me take a phone call for you if I could. we got Matt here on line one. I know your time is short with us today. Uh, sure. Matt, you're on with Commissioner Galvin. Hey, thanks. Uh, I don't... Hopefully this isn't too far off subject, but I'm interested in uh, uh, your thoughts on Begich's comments as to where you think he's headed um, as far as his thoughts about the federal involvement um, being or changing it from a state issue to more of a federal issue. Do you think he's talking like the way we've gotten involved in banks, uh, auto industry, and probably health care in the near future? Or is he talking more like what the feds did to get the um, TAPs going by getting, you know, the, the lawsuits basically. Yeah, it, yeah interesting, down. Matt. Let uh, Commissioner grab that one. Thanks. Well, I think that there, there is a lot of confusion that's generated from the Senator's comments. Um, I think it is unclear what, what he actually meant. I think that, um, well, Commissioner Irwin and I both uh, sent a letter to him yesterday, or actually today, uh, uh, just explaining to him that the, the project's are making tremendous progress going forward in terms of actually designing and engineering the pipeline, which is what has to happen in order for this project to become a reality. And the sense that there uh, is no progress is, is simply the fact that there aren't any press releases going out about it because it's actually the daily grind of, of making the project a reality. In terms of the motivation behind it and the implications of saying he wants to have uh, it become a national project um, that is really uh, unclear what because and I, and I say it from the standpoint of from our perspective it is a national project it's a project that has tremendous importance to the United States in terms of both our long term energy planning but also our national security and the reliance on domestic sources of energy as opposed to foreign sources of energy and so we see it as strategically and economically critical to the the future of the nation, and it therefore demands national attention in terms of making sure that uh, it but, becomes a reality. But, but you you would argue you would argue that Alaska has its own sovereignty, and that uh, we're 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 able to um, handle this project and 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 control this project on our own. That and and this project should never be taken over by the federal government out of D.C. Right? Well, uh, more so that. There's nothing right now that indicates that the private sector can't go forward with this project on their own, that it's just a matter of aligning the interests of both the shippers and the pipeline to make this project a reality. The economics from our vantage point, from what we have seen and analyzed, indicate the project makes sufficient money for the private sector to advance it. And uh, there are opportunities for the federal government, uh, as they've done through the loan guarantees that they already have in place, to enhance the economic viability of it so that it can ease its way through become a private sector project we don't see any reason at this point for it to yep. become a public sector project <clears throat> um, either being done by the state or the federal government all right and I we're, don't know if that's where where the senator was going with it but his language was unclear yes uh, 